Okay, so in this video I'm going to talk about some of the settings that you need to do inside the Zoom classroom itself. So I'm going to go to zoom.us. I always go through the internet. I don't open the app. And I'm going to log in if I'm not already, but I am. So now I can go ahead and I'm going to host a meeting with my video on. This is just to get it open to show you the settings. Normally I would click on a um, link to a Zoom meeting that I've already scheduled. It's going to open the app. There we go, and I'm joining with my computer audio. So what I normally do first is I turn on, before anybody comes in the room, I turn on my participants and I turn on my chat. That way all of that is there, so as my doorbell starts to ring, I can allow people in. But the tricky thing is, is if I go to share my screen, and I choose, let's say, Chrome, share, now I have to pull up <laughs> my participant list again, and I have to go to more to pull up my chat again. And if I'm doing a Google slideshow, and I go to present mode, then I have to do all of those things again. And all the while, the doorbell's ringing. So that's something that I'm learning to adapt to. Okay. So here I am. I'm going to go through some of the more um, tricky stuff that happens in Zoom. And so one of them that everyone's asking me about is breakout rooms. So breakout rooms is something that you can assign ahead of time. You would do that in your settings in zoom.us. You wouldn't do it necessarily here in the breakout room. This is to be able to assign a breakout room on the fly. So if I had my list of participants in here, First, I would say I want to assign my participants into how many rooms, so I'm going to say four rooms, and I could do it automatically and it'll just be rando, or I could do it manually, which is a much better idea, and then I would create my breakout rooms. So then what happens is you get your list of breakout rooms, you can rename them if you want to, like, um, you know, the name of their groups or whatever it is that you want to, you don't have to, and then you would go ahead and you would assign them to the people that are in the breakout rooms. You would see a list of names and you would choose each person at a time. With you guys doing, you know, a smaller group of students that are on your Zoom calls, it isn't crazy to do it on the fly like this, but like I said, you can try and do it ahead of time. For me to do it in a group of 80 people, I might just do random assignments. It just depends on what the purpose is. You can also add a room if you need to add more. I don't know what recreate is. All existing rooms will be replaced. Oh, I guess if you want to be able to redo it all and then you have some options here. Are you going to move them all automatically? Are you going to allow them to re return to the main session whenever they want to? Um, are you going to have it close after a certain amount of time? Are you going to have a countdown? You can say what the timer is. This is a great feature to use so that you're not having them go on forever and then it will count down and then it'll whisk them back into the main room. And so once they're all in their breakout rooms, you're able to go from room to room, and they're able to come back to your main room, but they're not able to switch rooms, which is a good thing. You can only be in one room at a time, so it's often something that works really well when you have either an assistant teacher or a co-pilot of some sort with you or you move around quickly so that you can go in and check what's going on. So that's one of the features that a lot of people have questions about. The reactions down here are for a participant to be able to react, but there's more options up here where they can also click on yes or no, or could you slow down in what you're teaching, or could you go faster because you're boring, or if you click more, you have options like being able to put a thumbs down. You can put a notification next to your name if you're going to be away from the screen or that you need a break or that you are away from your screen and what will happen is when you do that the little icon shows up next to your name if you have a list of like 10 people they'd all have different icons depending on what they're picking and as a presenter you can go ahead and clear them all so that they all disappear so it's a great way to kind of take a temperature also when you have a list of participants in here and you click on more you have a lot of options a lot of awesome options. So being able to mute them or lock the meeting or um, play those chimes that happen when they come in or out. So those are all things that you can decide if that's gonna work or not. If you have someone who can't get in the room, you can always click on invite and then copy the invite link 
and send it to them or do something through your Gmail to send an invitation, whatever works. That gets them in there too. I use the mute all button because sometimes you'll have a discussion and then when you go back to needing to just have one speaker, people sometimes forget. So you can mute everybody and then unmute the people that need to speak or have them unmute themselves. Down here, when you're doing messaging, you have the little dots that you can choose and decide who's gonna be able to message who, whether or not they can only message you as the teacher, whether or not they can have a free for all and talk to each other or whether there's no messaging at all. And it all depends on the purpose of your Zoom. I'm going to take a break here and then um, upload this video knowing that there's probably still more you want to know.